Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are right in the middle of our graffiti project. Guys, she is coming along. She. Hmm. She needs a name, guys. I think she needs a name. What do you think? Uh, Rainbow Bright? Nah, nah, I ain't gonna cut it, guys. What should we name her? She's coming to life. You can't just be without a name. There's got to be a label to the essence that is Eleanor. Oh, guys, you can do better than that. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we are in with the greens, um, then in with some blacks, and I really don't need to explain this to you because it's all going to be explained on down the line. So, let's get right to her, guys. Check it out. All right, guys. I lied. <laughs> all right, we are not in with the green. Um, I had an idea of where these videos would be cut for the editing process. However, the editing floor seemed to be a much different story, guys. So I am just tightening up. You saw the last video, guys. I was finishing up with a dark blue. Yup, still using that dark blue, guys. Just getting some of these finer shadows, punching them in, chiseling out the details. And now, guys, I am moving to a light blue. So I know in the previous videos, I was saying for my color mixtures, I am going yellow, keeping yellow in the cup, adding some orange, keeping orange in the cup, adding some red, which gives me some nice blends and transitions in the cup long before I ever apply the paint to the piece. Well, when I go from a dark blue to a light blue, that just ain't going to cut it, guys. So I clean the brush out, clean it right out. Get that dark blue gone, get that light blue in there, and start pumping away the new color. Hope that helps you guys. Another little tidbit for the brain box. Tuck her in there. Alright guys, we are at real time here. I've muted the sound so you're not hearing my air spraying, but you're hearing me talking. So, you can kind of see light strokes guys. My air is always pushed down. My trigger is just pulling back for paint. Doing some little graffiti kicks here and there. Um, the strokes that I am using are very similar to graffiti strokes, guys. With a spray bomb you've got on and you've got off. So I'm not trying to do too many different variations with my strokes here, guys. I'm trying to keep it all relatively basic, guys. I'm not going in with too many different types of strokes. I'm not worrying so much about the blends from color to color. Again, we're not doing realism. This is more surrealism, so I'm just having some fun with it. My original reference was pretty bright and colorful. Um, I do believe what they gave me was a wall graffiti mural that was done in black and white and over time other graffiti artists had come by and given their flavor to it so I've leaned a little bit away from a black and white that has been spray bombed over top and pursued to go more of a stylized rainbow bright in your face big pop um and I can make sure that this has deviated enough from the original reference that copyright isn't an issue guys I've used the original for a reference but I can still sign it I can still date it as an original piece I like to play with US copyright at 30% guys but 30% is subjective when you're talking about art um, he used spray cans, guys. I'm using an airbrush. That's a big difference right there. Uh, he's spraying on a wall. I'm spraying on a fairing. Again, these are big changes in the art process that we haven't even touched on the design yet, guys. But still, if you're practicing, if you're doing your own piece, if it's going to stay in your collection and you know you will never sell it, then there's no problems. It's once you turn around and try to make a profit from that that people do get, well, and rightly so, they get angry, guys. Um, so with that being said, 
if you're gonna sign it and date it and try to make money off it, be sure to make sure it is at least recognizable as an original piece, guys. And with that being said, I blasted in the rest of the green there. I am now going in and chiseling in some blacks. Um, again, I'm leaning away from the black and white, so I kind of went in with my blues and purples to get the majority of my tones and values. Yeah, right. That was a little bit of real time for you guys. Now we're going to do some time lapse and speed this up a bit. I'm just going to chisel out the last of my black. And I would do a blacker than black right here, guys. But this project just doesn't warrant it. It is way too bright. Bright. Uh, brighter than a unicorn pooping skittles on top of a rainbow oh, how was that one <laughs> all right guys and would you believe what a quick google search typed up i thought i was twisted internet your mother would be so ashamed so ashamed all right guys just getting in here with the rest of the blacks Getting the darkest areas of the project all defined and chiseled. Uh, that was an awkward close-up. All right, guys. Uh, so the clients did bring multiple references, which is what I recommend. It is so much easier to talk about art with having something to visually point to rather than to sit there and... You know, you know that color that I'm talking about? That color, y you know? You know that color that I'm talking about? No, not that color, the other color. Yeah, guys, that could go on for days. And on the same note, I could sit here and draw and draw and draw for hours and hours and hours and not come up with anything that the client likes. So, it is imperative that my customers come to me with reference. I tell them all, bring as much reference as you can. Even if it's just a color sample of a color that you like, bring it. And then we can play off what they dig and I know what they like and I can have a very good idea of what to do to accomplish a project that they will be happy with. So the hair is a lot more stylized. We're going into, again, some more graffiti tones as opposed to a realistic hairdo. But this is some of the aspects and the elements that they brought that they really liked on other pieces. So we incorporate it into one. And guys, this is sort of my job, is taking other people's ideas and putting it into paint. Um, so it is another way to do original artwork, guys, is to take from multiple reference sources and take them and put them into one project, guys. And I know a lot of you guys have been commenting on application of color. Some of you guys are struggling with this still. It's another great way to learn, guys, is to study what others have done. Try to mimic what others have done. Again, if you're just doing a practice piece, guys, there's nothing wrong with trying to nail a picture, trying to nail what somebody else did. Don't try to sell it. Keep it in your own collection. But there's nothing wrong with that, guys. And this will, this will teach you more than I can tell you is the trial and error, guys. Um, it's how I learn. It's how, it's how every great artist learns. You know, there's so much that can be told to a person and then that person just has to go out and try it for themselves, guys. All right, guys, back to the art at hand. So we are in real time here, guys. I am punching in my white highlights, the brightest of the brights. Um, and again, using my reference to source out where the brightest highlights should be. I can make it up in my brain, but it's so much easier to use something that's already been built. Um, if I'm doing a tiger, guys, I like to use a photo of a tiger, guys. Um, and what I like to do is I will take that picture and I will photocopy it into a black and white. And this is a simple, simple way, guys, to figure out your tones and values, guys. Um, a lot of times when I'm starting a portrait or a tiger or an, really any piece, guys, I do a lot of skulls, um, I will start them just white and black. I will map it all out white and black until I'm happy with it. And then I go in with transparent colors over top of what's already been mapped out. Um, I also believe guys make your mistakes in your drawings. Um, I know a lot of guys are like freehand, 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 but dude, stencils give you some beautifully, beautifully sharp edges. They also help again, if you're going to draw it first, you can erase, you can make mistakes, you can erase your mistakes, you can get your drawing to where it's a solid piece 
long before you're ever like freehand, freehand, freehand. Oops. Oh, well, now I got to fix that. Freehand, freehand. Oops. Ah, oh, I got to fix that. Freehand. Oops. <laughs> yeah, guys, you get the gist. All right. So there's a lot of different aspects to it. I know a lot of guys kind of consider stenciling cheating. I definitely don't. Um, it is a tool, guys. Everything is. Um, a paintbrush is tool. And what would freehand be, guys? Question. What would freehand actually be? Does that mean I'm not allowed to use an airbrush? Does that mean I should not be using paint? Should, it, it, is true freehand finger painting? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it? Is it biting a chunk out of your arm and using your own blood. I know some guys are really funny when it comes to this. I, sir, am not. Whatever you need to do to achieve your final result is okay by me, guys. So there you go, man. You've been given the seal of approval, the bloodshot seal of approval. Rock on and roll out, guys. We are getting close to wrapping up this little beauty. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I am in love. Ooh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, oh, all right. Let's peel off a little bit of, uh, uh, clothes. I'm, I mean, masking. Huh, I don't know where I was going with that. Let's just peel it off and take a little peek. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, guys? All right, let's get down to it. Here we go guys, revealing the red pinstripe that was laid down before I got here. And what do you think? There's only one thing I'm gonna say here, guys. Oh, Eleanor, you take my breath away. <laughs> All right guys, we gotta do better than that. Hit me up in the comments. What do we name this little beaut? What do we name her? All right, guys, there you have it. That's a wrap, as they would say. All right, guys, on to the next. It's uh, really late, early. I don't know. I haven't gone to bed yet. It's about time. And uh, this channel has been, it's been a journey, guys. What's in store? What's in store? Well, I don't know. Nobody can say... Wait, that's not true. That's not true. There's people that predict fortunes all the time. All the time. And I was fortunate, fortunate <laughs> enough to have Chinese food for dinner today. And it comes with a little fortune in the cookie. The fortune cookie, as it were, guys. I might fast forward this part, but you gotta eat it. You can't not eat it. Alright, I need some water. Ah. <laughs> 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 When they're that dry, you call them crackers. <laughs> All right, guys, let's see what this fortune says. Well, I think, I think you're supposed to ask a question. Will this channel be a success? And then you give it a shake. Will this channel be a success? What do you guys think? Ooh. All right, guys. Thanks for following along. As always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. And with all kidding aside, guys, can you read that? Don't let others 
stop you from doing what you believe is right. What better advice from a cookie, guys? Remember that? Words to live by, words to munch on, bring your water. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, keep them airbrush fingers nimble, strap on them boots. Stay tuned for part three, the third installment of the graffiti bike. Cheers. And also keep your eyes peeled for the upcoming speed painting. I know these tutorials are fun, but if you want to see it blasted through in a couple minutes, guys, check that out. And until next time, peoples, cheers.